All right. All right, good evening. Welcome to the Township Committee meeting, uh, February 8th, 2021. This is all being held uh, via the Zoom platform remotely. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Hi, hi Vern. And Mr. Templeton. Here. Also present, Mr. Schwab, our Township Administrator. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Laura, Municipal Clerk. Uh, no kitty tonight. We've got uh, Beverly Russell. There she was there. There you are. Yep. You're hiding in the upper left secret square. All right, Beverly Russell, Administrative Clerk. Uh, let's see, Chief De Desi DeSanto. We've got Aaron Provenzano, our Information Technology Specialist. And assorted members of volunteer boards and commissions. Uh, flag salute, please. I think it's visible. Yes. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, invisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. For all. All right, Sunshine Statement, Mrs. Lohr. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Remote meeting statement. Um, the uh, Zoom meeting platform is being used for this meeting with the meeting ID and passcode published on our website and posted on our bulletin board and the front door as required um, under executive order. The advanced public comments um, will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. No advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public uh, meeting start time. Um, they can be sent to me either via my email or to the address 770 Coopertown Road and members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the, the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments uh, or their questions via audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. Um, and then um, the agenda for this remote meeting is available on the Delanco Township website uh, at delancotownship.com under the agenda tab. And for the pur purpose of um, the public advanced public notice mayor uh, and committee, I did not receive any advanced public comments or questions for this meeting. We did receive additional information for the budget presentation from um, I believe HPAB. Yes. And um, later on I'll enter a piece of correspondence received from the recreation chair, but that's not, a, that's not an advanced public comment. That'll be entered as correspondence okay, very good. Uh, between, between the agencies. Thank you. All right, uh, we've got a very short uh, uh, business meeting tonight, a couple of consent agenda items, and then we'll uh, have the correspondence item that Mrs. Ward talked about, and then we'll go into a hearing from our respective uh, uh, boards and commissions uh, that are uh, managed and run and planned by our, our volunteers in the community. So at this time, I'd like to open the meeting to the public for comments and questions. Uh, at this time, if you have a question, comment, state your name, uh, address, and uh, we're all, all ears. And the public is reminded, if you do have a comment or question, uh, if you would like to use the audio format, please unmute yourself, or you may type your question into the chat function. The chat, where is the chat? All right, hearing... No comments and seeing no hands raised, I'll close this portion of the uh, public comment session. Uh, consent agenda items are considered uh, to be routine and will be enacted in a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent ag agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Are there any items the uh, committee member would like to see removed from the consent or any detailed questions regarding any of those items? Uh, the first resolution, 2021-41, uh -huh. there is no Oakland Avenue in Delanco. Uh, that gentleman's check says Oakland Avenue, Somerdale. 
So if he has a Delanco residence, uh, I hope we change that resolution because we have it sending to him at Oakland Avenue in Delanco. Oh, Delanco. Okay, no, that's not. That's my. His check out. says Summerdale. It's got to go. It's got to go to Summerdale. I'll change. I'll fix that resolution. Okay. Okay. But if he's if he's a resident of of Delanco, uh, registering his dog, does he have a Delanco address? He's probably paying on behalf of someone else. Oh, okay. In Delanco, we have to send the check to the person that submitted the payment and, okay. that, and that's where it has to go is the uh, what's on record on the check but i will fix that resolution okay um, and uh accordingly thank you good catch and the other resolution i was just wondering is that project finally done uh 42 that's the, the sea walls are they done I think Richard can comment. I think there's a retainer being held back. Correct. Yeah. This. Okay. Yeah. That they still haven't done done a couple of the things, and there's still a two percent retention, which is several thousand dollars. Okay. But that's just to make sure those things are done. There's no more. There'll be no more change orders. So we now know what the okay. total is. We just won't pay him the final amount until he does this final couple things that he has to be doing. Okay. Thank you. And in that reduction. Where does that money go uh, into our surplus? No, the reduction uh, re uh, gives us a balance in the capital yeah. account. Eventually, we will cancel that and use that to pay off the debt. It'll go into a reserve for debt service. Very good. Thank good. you. Good. All right. Resolution 2021 41 refund of overpayment for a dog license. Uh, resolution 42 authorizing change order number one for the street and seawall repair project. Uh, resolution 43 resolution of the committee of the Township of Delango County of Burlington, New Jersey, authorizing the appointment of a uh, special law enforcement officer, police uh, payment of bills. Account current fund uh, $78,393.24. Payroll $43,439.51. Capital fund $17,000. $96.10. Escrow trust, uh, $3,705 even. Municipal open space, $486 even. And approval of minutes, uh, January 11th, 2021. Uh, motion to approve the consent agenda, please. So moved. Second. Rectorate, second by Chris Holland. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Ouellette? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. All right, correspondence, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, I do have a few pieces of correspondence. I'll try to move, move through them quickly. Uh, the first thing, though, is an uh, email I received. It's just um, in our agency, though. Um, but I don't want to wait till the March 1st meeting. We're looking, the John is having looking to have community cleanup day at the Public Works Garage on Saturday. April 10th, okay? And um, with that, we'd like to also have another shredding event for the residents. It's been very successful. Um, we, uh, as a township, also have many things that are beyond retention. We have approval for uh, disposal. So we would like the township committee's approval to run another sh uh, spreading, uh, sh shredding event in the spring uh, on the same day as the cleanup day on April 10th. Sounds good. It's, they've been, we've had two and they've been both been very successful. I have the box already. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing that. We're hearing that from a lot of residents. When's our next one? When's our next one? Yeah. Yeah. Are you all good with that? I'm good. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, we're also looking at the spring townwide yard sale, the, uh, the last Saturday in April. So um, we'll uh, start working on that and see what uh, other groups will be participating, um, fire, EMS, scouts, things like that. Um, so that's that. That's the 24th? The 24th for the spring townwide yard sale. COVID free, I hope. Hopefully, hopefully. The next piece of correspondence that uh, we received, um, and everyone did get a copy as well as our solicitor, is that we received a letter from Michael Floyd of Dolan Contractors. They received their uh, 
County Planning Board conditional site plan approval. And part of that uh, conditional approval, approval is requesting that the township adopt an ordinance prohibiting the tractor trailer vehicles to make a right hand turn out of the site head, uh, heading towards the center of town. So um, I wanted to get that on the record as being received. Uh, again, um, Doug does have that. Uh, so if um, everyone's okay with that, we can and, um, have Doug uh, do that ordinance. Or if you want to schedule it as a discussion item. Yeah, I think maybe it should be a discussion item. I was talking to uh, the chief about it and we have to talk to our engineer about exactly how that uh, exit is going to okay. be laid out, out and yep. what the enforcement is, whether uh, the yep. police can enforce a turn off of a private property and how that's done. We don't have that in our books yet. So we may have that ready for your March 1st or March 8th meeting. I don't think it's a something has to be done ASAP. Okay, so we'll list that as a discussion item for 3-1 when um, Doug and uh, Harry are here. Um, we received a email from the Shade Tree Commission, Secretary Ms. Flanagan, requesting that um, Dr. John Payet be moved from alternate two to the full voting member to fill a vacancy um, that was created by uh, Dave Atkinson's resignation back in um, July of 2020. And Mr. Paye was recently voted in as the chairman of the Shade Tree Commission. So they would like to make him a full voting member um, by um, appointing him to uh, Dave Atkinson's unexpired term. So we received that. We also received an email from the chairman of the Delanco Recreation Commission uh, requesting that um, Ms. De La Pena, Alyssa De La Pena be um, moved into the unexpired term of Jack Haynes. Uh, she's currently alternate number one. Mr. Haynes has, I've been notified that he has moved out of Del from Delanco so that uh, his, his position is vacated so they would like to move Alyssa De La Pena from alternate one into his uh, unexpired term as a full voting member and also uh, move uh, Ms. Perlmutter, Amber Perlmutter from alternate two to alternate one. And that is the correspondence. And those, um, those actions you can do tonight, we can, or you can have them scheduled for March 1st. It is the committee's, at the committee's pleasure. Mm. Well, just list those as, as consent items, just so it it's on the record, published record uh, for Can March. Can do that tonight if you're ready? Yeah, I don't know why we wouldn't do it tonight since they're just replacing people who have resigned or moved out of town. Any other comment on that, John, Chris, Vern? Can we just motion to approve those uh, appointment yes. upgrades? Or you can. Yes, I would. Okay, and, uh, that, and a motion then. A roundabout way of making that motion. Yes. I'll make the motion. You second it. Okay. I'll second it. Make a, I make a motion that we um, appoint uh, Dr. John Paye. I'm not uh, sure if it's Paye or Paye. Paye uh, as the. He's smiling, um, so you must be close. As a voting position, as a voting position on Shade Tree, and also move Alyssa De La Pena as a voting position on Recreation. Move Amber up to alternate number one. Mm -hmm. We need a voter roll. Uh, a roll call yeah. would be appropriate. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Patrick. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Yes. Lett. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you for your service. And I think um, Erin, as a, a secretary and coordinator of recreation, she is, she's here. So she can make note of those uh, changes on her board and I'll, I'll reach out to Wendy to let her right. know. Any other correspondence? That's it for correspondence, right. thank you. All right, uh, 2020. Mike, be Mike, before you move into the budget, I just think that this should be on the record so everybody here said I did speak with Joe Brickley um, last week and uh, the contractor has received the key to start the demolition uh, project at the Burlington Avenue uh, building. 
the bed? Uh, the first item that we'll be doing is removing asbestos, which will probably take about 12 days. And uh, Jesse, I'm sure they're going to be in contact with you because once that demolition starts, they're going to have to detour traffic. Um, so um, look forward to hearing from Joe Brickley or, or Steve. I can't remember what Steve's last name is, but that's happening. Um, the history board wanted to try to get a walkthrough, but there uh, it's gutted. The building is gutted and um, there's nothing of any value in it. And it's a safety issue with the asbestos uh, the county's concerned about. So there will be no walkthrough. So I just wanted that to be on the record that that should be happening soon. Good, good. Appreciate uh, tracking that down and, and following up on that. Thank you. Any other questions of, of Kate uh, regarding that, that matter that she can fill in there? All right. All right, uh, 2021 municipal budget preparation. Uh, start off with, uh, now is this still the correct order, uh, Mrs. Moore, history board and Shay Tree to start off? Yes. All right, and let's see, history board. Uh, let's see, I see Mr. Fritz there. I see Dr. Payet, and if I could, to uh, off there. If I could start with a statement, um, I uh, made an effort to try to get you an update this afternoon, and I have a copy of it in front of me, um, and uh, realized I didn't carry all the figures through. Um, are you all looking at a copy of our um, proposal for this year? Yes. And um, the the uh, most current version would be two eight uh, of this year. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's really changed is that when we submitted this uh, back in December, uh, it's been our habit to include a financial report for the previous year. And we didn't have complete numbers for the for the, the year at that time. We had a number of projects that were in the pipeline. We weren't sure whether they were going to be um, finished you know, before the end of the year, whether they needed to be carried over. Um, and uh, we we're happy to report that they were all completed, delivered, billed, and paid in December. So I can give you um, the, the corrected figure then for our actuals for 220. So if you go down the, um, the column, the report that, uh, that we got from the township is that we actually spent $1,227 and 49 cents um, uh, in expenses for the year. And uh, that included all the projects that we thought might be accrued into next year. So that it cleans things up for us. Um, we had a $2,000 um, approval. We, we spent uh, 1200 what, $27. Uh, it doesn't affect our budget request for this year. It's just a little bit cleaner and uh, wanted to make sure you had that. You have any questions uh, for us uh, based on what we had? There's one paragraph on the on the first page that indicates something about uh, end of the year projects and uh, accruals and things, and that no longer applies since that they all got taken care of last year. So it looks like so the actual it looks like you're actually yes. asking for less this year than you did last year. Last year you asked for twenty five hundred. And this year you're asking. Well, okay, uh, I, I see where you're going. Uh, last year we um, were expecting that we were going to be spending $2,500, but we also expected that we were going to get a $500 underwrite for one of our projects, which would have mean, meant that we were really asking for $2,000, which is the, the bottom line on that second column. Uh, and so we asked for uh, 2000 we spent um, uh, 1227 and we're asking for the same amount this year. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen with events. You know, uh, this, we just don't know with the COVID. And it, it uh, kind of killed us this, this uh, past year uh, because we couldn't do a lot of the, the things that we had planned. So, Well, it looks like most of the items that you're requesting money for are signage and, and 
things like that that really don't require events. Eventually, you can have those events held later, but I, I don't think it, we're going to hold. You want to be held up on actually purchasing the signs, right? Uh, yes, I think this is probably going to be a signage year for us. Um, our um, special events that we have really don't cost us very much. Um, you know, even if we have a, a public event at the township building, you know, we might put out a little something for hospitality, but they usually don't really cost us much. Uh, the parades don't cost us anything. Farm fair doesn't cost us anything really. So um, I think it's just going to be uh, pretty much of a signage here this year. Any other questions for the history? All right. Well done. Thank you. Thanks for the good work okay. on so many different things. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Shay Tree. Here I am. I'm here. Hi. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi Kate. John. Hi, Bill. Kristen. Well, we're asking for the same amount of money we had last year. We're just allocating it differently. I think Kevin Sebelia has shown his worth. So we're going to make him basically our town forester. Have him attend every meeting rather than every other meeting. So we bumped up the professional services a little bit. And we reduced the uh, amount we spent on removals and tree planting. Everything else is pretty much the same. Good. Yeah, I think that's that sounds like uh, that's a good move. Have Kevin uh, more frequently involved. Hi, John. You're, you're on think, mute there. I'm, I'm sorry. There's a lot of commotion going on outside my house. There's ambulance out there, police cars. So, uh, um, I have a question for Richard. Recently. Uh, top notch was in town removing trees, and I suppose that's the 2020 uh, uh, shade tree budget money that John farms out. Correct. Do you have fun figures on that removal fees? The invoice for top notch? I don't have that in front of me. Um, yeah. As to what it was, but what we do is we look at whatever uh, there is a balance in the shade tree to uh, as the maximum. And John gets pricing for whatever uh, Wendy gives him as trees that are needed to be taken down for the end of the year. And uh, so he, he gets prices to use. I give him that, that as a maximum number. Sometimes it's higher than the 8,000 that's uh, uh, listed here because other things haven't gotten done. Uh, but we try to, uh, you know, get as many trees down as we can through that contract. I just think shade tree uh, secretary should be given those uh, figures so that we can keep track of what has been spent uh, on the removals from the contractor. Sure, we'll, give them, we'll be happy to do that. Okay, I'll forward, forward, on, I'll forward that information on to her now, or soon, tomorrow morning. Thank you. Any questions on shade tree or anything to add? To Bill or uh, uh, Tom? Well, I mean, we're leveraging our efforts as much as we can. To, we had a uh, utility contractor came in last spring and made a mess of things. So with Kevin's help, we were able to negotiate some, some pro bono work from him to uh, repair some of the damage he did. Uh, Good idea. And we actually had a, an informal settlement with one resident who decided to remove a street tree on their own. So we're gonna use that money to uh, replant part of lilac. So we're gonna contract that work out to the New Jersey Tree Federation, the group that did the pruning in Newton's Landing last year. Right. That's basically it. I mean, of course we have to be reactive in some regards. That when we have a storm event, we gotta get out there and do storm removals, but confident that this budget will get us through the year. Uh, Bill, if, if uh, we get the contract for the work on Lilac, and, and once we have that, then if we get the check from the resident, we can use that as an offset 
So it's we show the expenditure in the, in, out of the budget and we show the income and it offsets so that from a budget standpoint, it makes no impact, but whatever is negotiated, then we can run it through our books. Okay. Okay. How about, so, can we, since the, the, the contract is a nonprofit, can we just have the residents send a check to them directly? Question. Probably not a good idea. You should be tracking things. We're doing things on public property. Okay. Fair so enough. Either way, either way, by the way, her check, she could probably make it uh, deductible if, if she hits the federal requirements, uh, whether right. it's uh, to the municipality or written to a nonprofit. So that makes okay. no difference to her, but at least that shows uh, that we've spent the money and those are our trees and not her trees, my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Now, this is a little, uh, I know some time ago you were going to try to uh, work with NJ Transit to replant some of those trees at the station. Uh, that was, I know that was several months ago or back like back in the summer or more. Yeah, that, I, I was pursuing a grant application that didn't come to fruition. Yeah. And this year I just didn't have time to resubmit it. So yeah. keep my eye on the grants as they come through. I'll try again. Actually, we're developing a really good rapport with the New Jersey Tree Foundation. They have a good, they're good at sleuthing out grants as well. So I'm going to try and get them to help out. Yeah, anything just to uh, yes. replace what uh, what we've lost in disease and everything else. Uh, but uh, thank you for the great work uh, the whole Shade Tree Commission has been doing on that. Uh, it's a tough, tough job, very complicated, and you're dealing with the uh, weather that's a uh, nature that's taking a tree's taking a beating. Yeah, this year we also have the uh, spotted lantern fly, which I think is going to create some mortality as well. Okay. So. Any other questions for uh, shade tree comments? All right. Uh, anything else, Bill? That's it. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, U Sports, Delanco U Sports. Anybody? We're running a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, I see Sam's on. Yeah, I see Sam there. Yeah, I'm here. Matt was going to join us. I'm actually joining you from West Virginia. So, uh, nice. <laughs> they, they have internet down there. <laughs> yeah, there's some guy out there pedaling a bike to keep it going. <laughs> That's fine. Do you want to? Uh, are you, do you want to start in, or do you want to wait till he comes online and we can move on to? You know what? Um, I'd probably prefer to wait for Matt to come online because he has all the numbers in front of him. I unfortunately don't, since I'm down here. All right. And he's got uh, his part of EMS too. So. But yeah. I think EMS is on, Amy. Johnson and Amy Hollings are on. All right. All right. We can start with uh, emergency managed, emergency EMS squad. Uh, where are they? There they are. Amy and Amy. I'm here. Hello. Hey, Amy. So EMS um, isn't requesting anything more than what we have normally. Um, we did have some increased expense with COVID for supplies. We did utilize um, OEM's supplies as well, but splitting them between everybody, if we had to buy our own. Um, we do have to allocate for our new budget more money for incentives and training. We no longer get state funding for training and the EMT class is $1,800. So each of those categories have gone up to $10,000 each. Wow. Wow. So Amy, um, we have applied for some uh, refund of monies that we spent. Janice, uh, for the COVID, does that apply to EMS at all? Can they be covered in our, um, or Beverly? I think Beverly was on. Um, yeah, I'll defer to Beverly. Um, she is the lead on all the FEMA and um, the other grant from the state. I, I have um, been working with someone with trying to do, do the refund myself. So, oh, okay, because Beverly's Janet for the township. You may want to 
you may want to check with her because she's been, um, it, it, it's worked out well. I think we're going to get some funds. Yeah, I think I'm dealing with Reinhardt, Joseph Reinhardt, I think is his mm -hmm. name. I can look into the FEMA too, because we have not closed out the FEMA as far as I know. We've only, you know, I don't know when that actually ends. So I can look into seeing if we can put in for more and how that would, um, you know, how it would be with the emergency squad, you know, falling under, you know, under the township, you know, if we could do that on your behalf. Beverly also asked, I, I thought I read that uh, the local share may be reimbursed. That's a new, okay. uh, I can't remember that's coming from out of Washington or out of Trenton, but find okay. out whether that's the case. So, cause we were putting up what 25%, right? Yes. It's our share. And I think uh, everyone's gonna finally get reimbursed for even that portion. Uh, so that's something to ask when you talk to Joe Reinhardt. Okay. <clears throat> Beth, can you check to see if there's been any extensions on the CARES Act? That this, yes. Because that was a very quick deadline line. Mm -hmm. you, you hustled really, really tough to get to meet our deadlines, but can you see if there's any extensions where maybe the mm -hmm. EMS could participate into the with the CARES Act also? Okay, I'll check that out tomorrow. Thanks. A uh, question for Amy and Amy, Amy squared. Um, so what's, that, what's happening with our emergency squad? Are we getting out? Do we have enough people on, on hand? Um, so we have eight EMTs and two of them are currently out due to COVID reasons. They, um, I think they're just a little scared to respond. Um, the other half is seven drivers, which the state allocates that we're allowed to drive, you know, a driver and an EMT, and that's how we're getting out. Um, we still have Pamar actually on as our dual dispatch 24 hours a day. So it's not delaying any patient care. Because I, I just saw them in front of my house. Yeah, my we're River actually, thing. we're, tr we're trying, we're going to start a, a cadet program to try and start getting some of the kids in. It's, it's hard getting volunteers. And when I talk to the other chiefs and the chiefs meetings at the county level, everybody's having a hard time getting volunteers. Well, Amy, when, uh, when the other town comes in, such as the, uh, the big blue bus tonight, are we, do we reciprocate somehow? Do we um, get billed for those hours that they cover us? They're accepting whatever they bill the insurance companies for the residents. Okay, so that's okay. Um, actually, Pamar is going to be in the firehouse for the next six months while Riverside Firehouse is being under construction. Our firehouse? Yeah, our firehouse. So they're going to be um, running out of our firehouse, and we might actually, you know, be able to work together a little bit closer. And uh, does Del Rand cover us anymore? Dalran is on second in if Palmyra is busy because the Riverside truck is actually slower because they're just covering Riverside. So okay. Dalran ends up getting dispatched to second in if Palmyra is busy. Let, let, I mean, ever since the Palmyra, uh, Riverton, whatever they're called, they started to cover uh, Riverside, I often wondered are they still covering Palmyra at the same time? Do they have to run down River Road to- uh, No, there's, um, there's another, another truck running out of Palmyra. Okay. So their chief has one truck in Palmyra that's covering the original, and then he supplies a second truck now for Riverside Township. Very good, very good. I know Amy, you- I, oh, go ahead, sorry. finish John, I'm I, sorry. I, I know you have the town's uh, best interest at heart, all you guys from emergency uh, squad. Thank you. Uh, Amy, I have a question for a resident who was billed from Palmyra. Um, since you said that Palmyra takes with their insurance, she, maybe that resident needs to submit it to her insurance first before she pays the bill. Is that the is that the process, or do you know? Um, I'm not sure. The, usually, it's it goes right to the insurance company. Um, she can actually, if you can, somebody give her my number. I can probably transfer her to somebody who would be able to help her. Okay. If anybody knows it. Um, sometimes it goes right to the insurance company. Also, if it's an ALS bill, they're responsible for the virtual bill. Okay. I know the squad wise, it's, it's, they send three and then you can, it, it, they just disappear. Okay. The virtual though, you must, they, they want their money. Right. Okay. I'll let her know. Thank you. You're welcome. 
On the, uh, I got a question on the, uh, on the, on the budget, the 21 budget, it looks like you've got about a $3,600 shortfall. Is that, am I looking at that correctly? Totally. That's it. Yes. Where is that? Yes. So you're, you're $3,600 short for the year, correct? Yes. I want to hear the call. <laughs> He's gone. He's out the door. <laughs> so is there a way you need to make that up with either other donations, grants, or is that so something I, that the, the wait and see through the year? The shortfall is the probably the ten thousand dollars for training. Uh, people to go through class it's not guaranteed that everybody's going to go through class okay we're also looking in because apparently through the state of new jersey we're still eligible for the trading fund but we have to supply the paperwork and the funds the reimbursement can take up to two years yeah so we're also looking to see how we actually have to fill out the paperwork to do the reimbursement through the training fund because we are volunteer all right All right, and the uh, the the cadet program. Um, yeah, uh, keep uh, keep uh, Aaron Provenzano apprised of that as far as GIF requirements and and the personnel and and so forth. Uh, that you coordinate that with the GIF that you, all our people are covered and and uh, by name listed and so forth. So for some reason, my internet now, can you repeat that? <laughs> yeah, you talked about a cadet program. Yes. And uh, just to be sure to keep Erin uh, Provenzano, she's our GIF fund commissioner, informed of, of, of that program and that she can run that through the, the joint insurance fund that we're all covered and, and uh, whatever requirements come the other way that you need to provide as far as names or uh, their qualifications and so forth as as they go through that program. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Any other questions, comments for uh, EMS? Matt? I just want to congratulate Carter. I guess he's one of the new cadets, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Congratulations to the young man. Thanks. I know he's been looking forward to it. He's already out the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, nobody from emergency management. I'll see uh, Terry Hamlet. All right, we'll double back. Dysa? So it looks Am I come here? It looks like Matt's one. Yeah. Sam's here also. Yep. Yeah. All right. Dysa. <clears throat> Just switch uh, budgets here. Okay. So we're pretty much, uh, Matt, we're not asking for any more than we've asked for in years previous, correct? Correct. We have uh, $6,000 down uh, for municipal grant, which I think has been consistent with the previous years. And how did we finish uh, 2020? 2020, we are... Uh, actually, we were ahead by thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, most of that came because of our uh, basketball. I'm sorry, our uh, yeah, our basketball program was cut, so we didn't have a lot a lot of loss on that basketball. We usually uh, don't make much profit on at all. So with basketball not being able to happen due to COVID, we ended up in the positive on that. I noted when the insurance bill came in that it was a lot less, and I guess it's because of some of the sporting uh, events didn't take place. So that's we have correct. to go by the numbers. So yeah, um, yeah that's usually good. around 28, it's around 1600 this year. 
Yeah, that's correct, Kate. And that's that's directly reflected in the fact, like Matt said, there's no there's no basketball program. So that's a big chunk of insurance money saved right there because we didn't have to budget for that. Right. We you are moving forward with um, baseball, softball and T-ball oh, yeah. this year, right? Correct. Good. Yes. Yeah, registration's been open for that, Kate. Um, we have a fair amount of registrants so far, but we're going to have it open for another month and change still. And you'll still be looking for sponsors? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we definitely be looking for sponsors this year. Last year, we couldn't have our fall feast, which is our big uh, fundraising event, as you know, and most of you guys go to um, just due to COVID, we couldn't have that. So uh, we'll be definitely looking for our uh, business sponsors as well. And we'll have uh, a, fundra a fundraising drive going over in the next couple months. Good. Do you have any questions on the budget that we had submitted? <clears throat> Excuse me. No, I'm good. Now, as far as the uh, the, the, the insurance, are you still planning uh, whatever happens through this COVID year coming up, uh, counting on a lesser expense in that or counting on a refund there? Or what's, what's, what's your... We, uh, we just resubmitted our policy runs from February through February, so it's February of next year. All right. So um, when I submitted the renewal for, uh, um, I guess the remainder of twenty one, that was submitted with with the expectation, like I said, that there won't be any basketball program, as there wasn't in the end of twenty twenty. The unfortunate thing is that I think that we probably paid for the basketball program last year when we did that renewal that covered year of 2020. And unfortunately, I'm sure, as we all know, we're probably not going to get a refund on that money. Oh. Um, so this year, uh, like I said, I budgeted without that, um, that amount of uh, participants. Okay. That insurance is paid by, by the township too, that we pay that insurance. Richard may want to address that, but we've been paying that Correct. insurance. Yeah, we pay it directly. And we budgeted based on last year. So when we get, if, if we're desperate for uh, the difference between what the actual bill we just paid and what was budgeted, we can adjust that down if we need to on our uh, insurance budget. Doesn't affect the $6,000 payment to DISA. And it may, uh, may end up actually staying that way for a bit. Uh, regardless of COVID with the basketball, uh, as we were basically told we can't use the school facility anymore. So until we are able to find a uh, facility to host our basketball, that's going to be uh, cut out. That was strictly for, for COVID or another reason? Yeah. Uh, Sam, I think Sam could explain it better where we were basically told to take our stuff out and yeah, it, you know, I think it was to defer to uh, the... Um, building engineer, the, the board deferred to the building engineer uh, if he wants our uh, us to be able to use it uh, anymore, but Sam could explain on that. Yeah, basically the, uh, the information that was given to me was that they um, were discontinuing the practice of outside groups being able to use the school facilities. Um, I think it was specifically targeted at indoor practices for like softball, baseball, um, like uh, preseason workouts and things like that. But with COVID, you know, everything's been, uh, been halted in the school buildings and we're not sure if going forward, what, you know, once COVID resolves itself or, or, you know, things get back to some kind of normal, uh, we're, we're still uncertain if they're going to allow us back into the buildings or any, any, um, you know, outside groups into the building. So like Matt, that said, if that doesn't happen, we're not sure what the future of basketball is. But to be quite honest with you, um, we're not sure what the future of basketball is um, across the board throughout the, the riverfront towns. A lot of towns have suffered um, dwindling numbers. 
So um, that that could factor going forward as well. Okay. All right. Um, this is Sam, this is Fern. Uh, is yeah. that using uh, both schools, gyms, or just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, Fern, we did. We would use the Pearson gym as well as the Walnut Street gym. Okay, thank you. I think that would be um, something to uh, if and when this COVID is uh, releasing some of these uh, restrictions, that that was part of the referendum for the addition to the school was because um, different groups in Delanco had the use of the school. Um, that may be, you know, something that's in that referendum. I, I, I'll see if I can look it up, but um, it wasn't just for the school. It was for the purposes of the residents of Delanco as well, because we had volleyball there. Um, we hold other activities there. So, um, so I think maybe these restrictions are really because of COVID, at least that's what I'd like to think. But I'll, I'll look into that. Then we can bring that back to the school board. We yeah. Raise the question with them. Definitely. Yeah. If there's any course, uh, Sam and Matt, if there's any correspondence between you and, and, and the district regarding what you can do or can't do, you know, uh, keep, keep, keep the, the, the township informed. Let us know, you know, uh, if things are going great or, or if, if maybe. Um, we need to take yeah, let me know as your as your liaison. Send me any correspondence you have. That would be great. Yeah, sure. We can we can do that. And and like I said, at this point, I think you know it's it's a mute point until right. at least next fall because we won't won't have any use for the facilities between now and then. But like you said, Kate, some of these other um, community groups like rec with the volleyball and the, and I know there's some other groups that uh, hopefully as the restrictions ease, um, you know we'll be able to get access to the facilities again. Right. Thank you. Any other questions for the reps, reps from uh, DISA? All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for running a great program. Uh, really a professional job. And uh, thank you for all the, the long, long hours that uh, nobody sees that you put into this. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Kate. Everyone else. Uh, let's see. Library board. I see Mrs. This is Will Bradcliffe. And who else is I'm there? I'm here. There you are. I expect Mr. Lord to be joining us. I don't see him on the Hollywood I just texted him. I just let him in. He's uh, muted right now. Beautiful. Okay. He's in the parking lot. Good evening, everybody. There he is. Hi, Tom. Tom. You're on. Go ahead. All right. Um, it's nice to see everybody in this strange format, but it's very nice. Uh, the township library is not requesting any further increase this year. We'd like our funding capped at the 2020 level if we can. Uh, we, I have a few highlights to share. First is that our, we're very proud that we kept the library running with a broad range of services throughout the COVID emergency thus far. Um, there have been 7,721 items checked out of our library and 2,600 in attendance. And I just want to highlight, you know, we all know that we love books, obviously I do, but um, the library is way more than books. So I'd like to highlight a few things that I know have happened up there to help people during this emergency. One was that a patron came in and she was trying to apply for disability and had no way to do that. So the library helped her to fill out her paperwork and apply for disability. Another patron came in and she was using the screen on her phone to apply for housing. So um, the staff was able to get her on a computer, find the form she needed, help her fill it out, print it, scan it, and send it back. Um, they've helped a lot of different patrons with DMV issues. As you may know, you're able to do a lot of your DMV transactions online during this time. But if you don't have access to computers or you're not real savvy, that's not really helpful. But the staff at the library has been. 
Uh, they certainly have pivoted on the delivery of services. When everything was shut down tight, they provided home delivery for the, the patrons that called and requested it. They actually drove books to their homes. Um, they've provided parking lot pickup, browsing by appointment only. And as of March, they're moving to browsing with just a call ahead because we are limited in numbers. So we wanna make sure that someone doesn't walk all the way up the walk and find out they have to stand out in the cold. So we're just asking that people will call ahead. They establish a puzzle loan program. So if you had nothing to do at home, you could check out a puzzle and take it home and put it on your dining room table. They publicized all of the service options and programs through our electronic sign, our constant contact, which comes out every month and is beautifully done, very professional piece. We're very proud of it. Uh, we also send things out through the township blast, thanks to Beverly. Things go out into the Beverly B through Rick Trout and Katrina maintains our social media accounts. Uh, during the uh, COVID emergency, we've done a lot of things on Zoom. Um, one of the things that a good thing that's happened is that the state library has allowed all the libraries in the state of New Jersey to have Zoom accounts that, for their use. So that's been very helpful. We're hosting all of our regular groups. So the book club meets, the fiber arts meets, um, of course, no gathering in the building, but the staff has prepared story time videos every week. There are stories for school age children every week. There are things that you can pick up that are um, a books and a craft that you can do with your child at home. They've offered a lot of different kinds of programming. This month, we have some things for financial literacy. There was just one on Medicaid, Medicare, sorry. Um, we had two special book club meetings. One was with an author who happens to live in Newton's Landing, which was lovely. And the second really was brought about by Katrina. She was on social media and someone had said that she wished that she could think of a book to recommend for her book club. And Katrina recommended a book. The author chimed in from her home in New England and said, thanks so much for, and for plugging my book. And she offered to attend the Reader's Book Club and Katrina was able to get her to attend ours as well. So it was wonderful. If we had had to pay for that program, she was a professional professor up in New England. She had done all this research on the Holocaust. Um, it was a wonderful program. Uh, Katrina also took the initiative to take advantage of Zoom. So, um, you know, we're limited in space in the library anyway, but she's offering a program on jazz and the civil rights era in March. And it's a paid program. We don't do very many of those. Most of the things that we offer are offered by the graces of volunteers in our community. But this one was a paid program. So Katrina negotiated the rate to a very reasonable rate and then invited other libraries to join. So we have three libraries that will be um, co-hosting this event. We were able to cut the cost into it, our share as a third. And we're able to offer that to all our residents. So that's one of the advantages of Zoom. Uh, I know Katrina has also hosted the Delanco Seniors on Zoom yeah. through the library's account. And um, I, I'm sure that you know that she's actually not working when that happens. So she's doing that as a volunteer, uh, one of the, another service to the community. Um, we were closed for a brief period and the staff did require continuing ed hours. They explored grant opportunities at home and they did some you know, professional activities that they need to do that often they don't have time to do when the library is operating. We uh, continue with our fundraising, uh, though it seems like 300 years ago now in 2020, March, we completed our sign project uh, six <laughs> years in the making. So that was a big deal. We decided that having an annual appeal in April was a lot to ask when things were so very difficult. So we held off till September and we did a targeted annual appeal. We had a overwhelmingly terrific response. People clearly love their library. So that was excellent. We had a Zoom tea, Kate, I know you were able to attend that. Yeah, uh, and we great. just got word that we uh, received a grant that I applied for in July. Uh, it's called SafeNet and it will enable um, us to purchase some, uh, some combination of laptop or tablet so that when we're able to open more fully, we'll like be able to space patrons who'd like to use the internet throughout the library so they're not stuck side by side in a little room. So thousand dollars from investors, we're really pleased with that. And thanks to Chris Holland, we'll be hosting our uh, first 
hopefully our first of many, uh, River Run for Reading to be held in April as a virtual event. So people have a week to run whenever they'd like and there are prizes and all of that and it's a fundraiser. So there's some, just some highlights from our year. Great job, the library. I have always thought they've done a great job, but each year it just the, the improvements are just incredible what you do and the programs you offer. I actually saw Heather reading the story on squirrels. Um, I thought it was really cute. She does a nice job. Um, I have a question for Tom since he submits the budget. Um, I noticed the budget is, it doesn't have actual, it just has the budget amount. Um, I don't know if there is, do you keep a running amount of what you actually spend? Because we only get, it looks like it's just the budget, unless I'm misreading it, Tom. Nope, I'll send it to, uh, to you and Richard and everybody in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Because usually we receive both, like, yeah. you know, uh, what you spent last year, what you asked for, and then just, just for yep. our records. But uh, great job, the library. I've always been a great supporter of that. And uh, we'll continue. It's much appreciated. Any other questions Any? for the library of volunteers and staff? All right, thank you so much. Thanks for uh, holding um, What's the up together uh, during, this, uh, during this COVID year, this year of lemons. Okay. John, did you have a question? Yeah, what is what is the total budget amount? My papers are all messed up here. That you're asking for. 72.5. Thank you. My Thank score is uh, last year. All right, top line. Okay. Anything else? Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Thank Tom. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good night now. All right. Um, next is Environmental Advisory Board. We had a schedule. Hi, everyone. Hi, oh. Amber. All righty. So, would you just like me to go through um, our 2021 requests, or do you want me to do a summary of 2020 or both? or? Take it and run with it. Okay, I'll just um, start with the 2021 um, requests. Um, so total, in total, we're asking for 1,500. Um, it's a little more than last year, but we plan on doing a lot more this year, um, especially to make up for last year. You know, we couldn't do a lot because of COVID, but it seems like that's across the board, so. Um, the first thing we're asking for is $550 for our pollinator projects. So as most of you know, we got a grant last year from ANJAC for $1,300 for pollinator efforts. Um, and we're going to be using all of that this year. We plan on doing a lot of plantings this year and um, permanent educational signs at um, all of our locations, but the signs are a little more than we thought they would be. So um, if and when we run out of our grant money, we would like to tap into some of our budget money from the township. Um, so that's mainly what that is for, for the pollinator projects. Um, the next thing is, you know, just simple like promotional items like t-shirts. We wanna have a lot of cleanups this year. And so we want to be able to provide our volunteers with t-shirts to kind of, you know, make a cohesive team when we're out there picking up litter. Um, the next, I, and that's $150 about requested. The next item is cleanup days. We're requesting $200 for that. And that is for materials like gloves, bags, um, as well as refreshments for the volunteers kind of morale booster when we're done. The next thing is community day. Um, and we're requesting $125 for that. We usually do like kind of an environment, environmentally related theme each year. And we like to do a giveaway. One year we did um, reusable canvas bags. Another year we did um, reusable water bottles. So 
hopefully there's a community day this year and we'll get to hand out something else to all of the residents this year. Our next request is ANJEC member dues for 2021, which comes to $375. Um, and it's really important for us to be a part of uh, ANJEC because you know, we're eligible for grants that way. That's how we were eligible for the grant that we received in 2020. Um, they do a lot of webinars and environmentally uh, related promotional things for towns. And it's just a really good resource um, for us to learn from. And the next and final thing is um, our eighth grade environmental stewardship award that we give each year. Uh, we're requesting $100 for that. Usually we give uh, an award amount of $50, um, but we're hoping we can maybe give two this year. And I believe that is it. Good. Amber, are you gonna have cleanup days other than when the township, um, I, know, um, I know Christine was um, thinking of having a cleanup for the town rather than just you know, West Avenue or Hawk Island or whatever, because some of that cleanup money, if you need more money, can come from our, um, I think our uh, resources from recycling. Can't can we get something there, Clean Communities? Clean Communities, yes. Clean Communities grants. John Fenimore is in charge of that. Right. Because right. he gets, we, we get close to almost $8,000 a year, I think, on that. Um, that those funds should be utilized by this board as well as John, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I think that's what it's for. Yes. Yeah, he usually he uses it for what public works costs to support the receipt of all that and occasionally for some other projects that aren't done by others. So yeah, it all needs to be coordinated through John right. actually. And he has um, given up, provided us with materials in years past and right. I'm sure he will this year. And my hope is that we'll have a lot of cleanups this year, maybe one or two at Hawk Island, one at West Ave, one big townwide one that will really take a big effort to coordinate, but I would really like to see happen. So I would like a lot of cleanups to happen this year. That's great. Yeah, if you, I would, I would certainly help you with the cleanup of the town. Thank you. I would love, I'd love to be a part of that. Appreciate that. Any other questions for the AB and, uh, and their budget going forward? Thanks for uh, thanks for the great work, Amber, and really the energy that you've uh, you put into uh, the EAB and uh, uh, you and Liz and Bill and uh, uh, Christina uh, Vince and uh, and then Ed, a new member. So uh, uh, a small group but mighty. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see, recreation. Do we have... Maureen and Steven. Steven. I see Maureen. I see Steven. Steven, Maureen, and where's Phil? He's probably called in. <laughs> He's probably on the phone. Are you there, Phil? Phil is, is, is on. He's on as a phone number. He just unmuted. I just unmuted. Good evening. You're on. Okay. Recreation. Uh, as you can see by our budget, um, we're the rare, rare ones this year. We're actually asking for less than what we asked for last year. Uh, that being said, of course, is the COVID situation. We had to cancel out a lot of the concerts. Uh, we did not have an Easter egg hunt last year. And we had to restructure things to deal with the COVID restrictions. Um, one of the things we did this year is we handed out the gingerbread house. We had a drive up pickup for registered people. Uh, we also did something different with the drive in movie this time. Uh, that would be showing your major cost, major increase 
on um, the event part of that one. I mean, other than that, we, we've been fis fiscally, we have restrained on anything out of the ordinary. And that's where we're at at this point. I'll just quickly um, cover some of the main points that Phil, Phil already said. Um, as Phil mentioned, uh, we looked at our budget. Obviously, a lot of our events had to be canceled in 2020. Um, therefore, it allowed us to ask for um, substantially less than we received last year. Um, we always give the Township Committee our operating account balance um, to be transparent. And then we show our reserve and then our facilities fund, which is the fees that are paid by our local association and other um, athletic associations, which go into a fund that can only be used to help uh, maintain our, our athletic facilities. Um, so some ex changes to our expenses. Um, the 1780 was the Park and View movie night. Uh, I know Recreation was very proud that we could have that event. Um, you know, we were able to provide uh, some sort of recreational program for our residents during the year. We had still a couple summer concerts. Um, you know, our gingerbread house building um, recreation provided gingerbread houses to all residents, all households that wanted one, which we thought were, was really good. Um, Easter egg hunt, just because Phil said we didn't have it, which we didn't, we still had, we had already ordered the eggs. So if you, if you, if you see that, that expense, a 528 for Easter egg hunt. That's that's why um, COVID kind of hit February, March, and the eggs were already ordered, and we had to pay for them. Um, I gave you the 2019 proposed and actual because 2020 really doesn't reflect um, a full operational year. It doesn't show all of our expenses. 2019, I think, gives a, a much clearer picture of what our normal operation budget is. Um, Uh, uh, nature park activities, that was another thing um, in our budget uh, that we did, we really haven't had before. Um, we have some new members of recreation um, who, who are very um, enthusiastic, who, who really want to um, do a lot with our parks and recreation wants to support those initiatives. Um, so we, we took, uh, we, we put some money in our budget to accommodate for those, um, uh, for those initiatives. Any, uh, any questions? Any questions from committee of, of uh, recreation of uh, Mr. Lohr, Mr. McFadden, or Ms. Heldebrand? So Stephen, this is Fern. Uh, as you're planning out 2021 uh, with the activities, uh, like the Memorial Day Parade is still in question. Uh, Summer concerts, are you still planning on having the seven or eight? Or are you, we, we, we plan on having seven, but the eight, eighth concert is a floating, I guess you could say, concert. Um, if we have a cancellation or we have to reschedule, the recreation plans on just doing seven concerts um, instead of eight. But if we, if we, if all concerts go as scheduled and as planned, we do like to tack on an extra concert uh, in, in September. But yeah, the, the plan is to keep is to budget for our normal summer concert series. You know, hopefully COVID will will start receding. You know, by by you know hopefully by the warmer months, uh, we do plan on having a full schedule of which is seven concerts, and if no concerts have to be rescheduled, um, eight. Thank you. No problem, and I will just say that the concerts. I would probably say doing during the era of COVID is probably the easiest um, event to have. It's outdoors. Um, we, we can kind of keep an eye on um, social distancing and, and uh, mask wearing. Um, I went down. I, I didn't. I didn't get to go to every concert this year, but I did go to a few. Um, and for what I could see, there was um, most of the people were compliant um, with with mask wearing and, and social distancing.
Um, Stephen, for the for the record, could you tell us the um, the amount that is less than what you normally would have asked for, so that you know we know that. Sure. Uh, I believe last year we asked for 20... 27,387. Yeah, I knew it was around 28,000. 27,387. Okay. Yep. And I, I was I was able this year to give you probably um, as far as far as our operating account balance. Um, I was able to give you probably the most accurate amount than I have in previous years because the only expense that was still outstanding um, after 1231.20 was, uh, uh, an, uh, was a payment for the uh, winterization of uh, a concession stamp. So 33.4, that's pretty, pretty much right on the money. Any questions? Anything else? Anything to add? Tom and Steve really looks. Hey, John. I'm sorry. Uh, Brown here. Uh, after uh, interviewing all the boards, really looks like the rec uh, commission really got hit the hardest with COVID, having to shut down so many programs and make so many uh, alternate changes. So uh, I commend you guys for hanging in there and trying to manage the year. Stephen, nice to. Uh, um, presentation on the budget and your expenditure side. So uh, I just I just wanted to throw that in there. Nice job and good luck this year. I think it's going to be uh, another tough year. Thank you. Steve, you, uh, this is Fern again. Uh, with the uh, summer camp program, is there yeah. uh, any plans as far as having that move forward this year versus again with COVID? Uh, I know that the summer camp subcommittee, uh, we're, we're hoping to meet sometime at the end of this month, if not early March at the latest uh, to make, uh, to kind of gauge where, where we're going to be. Um, Cause we definitely have to let Linda Guckin know soon so she can start her planning. Um, I, I really don't want to say too much more than that until I have a chance to meet with the other sub, summer camp subcommittee members and get their opinion. I don't want to speak for them. Um, but I, I know that we want to meet, I, I know the intent is to try to have it, but of course, if, if COVID, um, is still raging, you know, I mean, I'm sure certainly that will be a factor. We don't want to put anybody, um, you know, at risk, especially our youth. And the other issue that was brought up earlier was in reference to DISA, uh, not being allowed in the school. Um, that brings up the concern for the record. Creation Commission, because like Kate said, we also do volleyball adults on Wednesday nights, and we also have the summer camp program for the youth. Right. Um, so we would need to find out from the school what their what yeah. their intent is right. on allowing outside groups to use their facility right. is where we're at right now. Good point, Phil. If, um, yeah. I, I guess you could say that if, if the school's not willing to allow us to use their facilities for the summer, then that kind of kind of makes the decision for us because I don't think there's another facility at this time that can hold our summer camp. Right. Well, I th again, I think that's something we'll have to bring to the school board. Yeah, I'm going to look. I'm going to look into that um, as your liaison. I'm definitely going to look into that and see what can be done if the school is operating um i know they're doing hybrid right now but um i don't think they can legally just tell us we can't use it the covid they're removed anyway. unfortunately we we have not had the conversation with the school so i can't say yay or nay at this point until um i reach out and get a response from them right right and and I, I will say say this that we briefly discussed it at our reorg meeting that even if we're not able to have a summer program like in person and the trips and everything that's normally done 
we do want to try to offer something um, for the youth and the families of the town, whether it's something virtual or, or you know, some sort of maybe small program, you know, maybe they meet up at a nature park or, or and do a walk or something. Um, you know, we, we do want to offer something in the summer. Um, so it, there will be something, whether or not it's the normal summer camp that we're, we, we've come accustomed to, that still is the question. Thank you again. Yeah. Yes, thanks. Anything else? Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for a great job. Thanks for being uh, really nimble this year and uh, reacting almost uh, hour by hour and daily uh, through the spring as things were changing rapidly with the upcoming events, Memorial Day Parade and, uh, and the concerts and so forth. So uh, uh, great credit to uh, just being very flexible and thinking outside the box. Uh, I think we got it all. Uh, did I miss anything here? Terry? Did, yeah. Now, I don't think she signed on and I I was looking to see if I didn't we hear from her. And did we get a budget? I no, we did not. Budget. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see a budget in my packet. Yeah, so I guess we'll it. have to contact her, Richard, maybe. Yep. It's usually not a very big budget that I... Yeah, it's, it's, it's the typical... I mean, this, as we have always said, this back and forth is generally not to determine how many dollars, because nobody's here trying to get more dollars, actually, but let's... But it's right. that communication, annual communication. Yeah. There's no point in budgeting things if you don't know what it's for. And right. uh, yeah, so Terry will probably put the same amount before, but I'll uh, contact her and, and ask her if there's any anything that she wants to add. Okay. Yeah, and Thank you. That, that's really the key. I mean, we've got uh, several groups that uh, their activities and interest uh, cross uh, group lines and in, into um, the areas that other other uh, boards and commissions are involved in. So uh, this is a good uh, good opportunity for everyone to hear what everyone else is dealing with. So, all right, Richard, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Schwab or Janice, uh, Mrs. Lord, do you have anything to close out as far as any information as far as the budget? Our next uh, workshop is in two weeks. All right. So I'll be forwarding on to you any updated numbers, particularly capital stuff, debt stuff. Uh, our auditor is gonna be in this week to flesh out the financial statement. And so we'll have to get you the surplus information and the anticipated revenues. And we've got information from the assessor on the, there is an increase in the uh, rateables due to the crossings in particular. And we have an increase in the pilot income as uh, Doug reported to you, particularly some retroactive stuff so uh, we'll we'll look more on the the revenue side and the impact uh, at the meeting on the twenty second. My guess is because everything's running later with the financial stuff that uh, we'll be even later in introducing the budget, not because of difficulty in making a decision, but in terms of having all the information we need to uh, put together. So uh, hopefully when we see each other on the screen on the twenty second, you'll have in front of you. Uh, a lot more uh, revenue information and some projections as to what kind of tax rates might be out there. And that's an afternoon uh, workshop, uh, 3.30 on the right. 22nd, correct? 3.30 on the 22nd, correct. Uh, Monday. Same Zoom station. Same Zoom station. All right. Um, anything else for the evening? Otherwise, a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you all. These guys know what they're doing. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Right. I'll see you in the office tomorrow. Let me just.